Okay, so let's start our introduction about normal distribution. So one of the motivation to introduce the normal distribution is um because uniform distribution is not enough because <coughs> typically data do not spread uniformly. If we think about uniform distribution, so there is a lower bound, there is an upper bound, and we say all the values in this region are equally likely to occur. Okay, but in many cases this is not true, and especially those cases that values may be actually close to the center. Most values are close to the center, so. That means if the center is let's say here, then most data locates around the center, but only a few locates otherwise. Okay, so there are many natural examples. Like if we find if we collect a set of people, their heights are typically following this、um, property. The weight of many dogs. The lengths of many leaves, or the temperature of a city. Okay, these natural variables basically have this central tendency. Performance variables also have central tendency. So, if we are measuring the number of cars crossing a bridge, or the sales generated by multiple salespeople, or The consumer demands of multiple products, or the same product in multiple、um, places, or multiple days, or the students' grades from multiple students. Typically, they spread, but they do not spread uniformly, right? Typically, most data locates around the center. If we are talking about、uh, estimation errors or production errors, then of course it's the same thing. So we need a distribution that has this kind of central tendency. We need a distribution that most data, most values are close to the center. That's normal distribution. I should say normal distribution has that property. So a normal distribution is something like this. Okay. Every time when you see a normal distribution, it look like this. So there is a center, and most data, okay, most data locate around the center. Here, this particular curve is the PDF, is the PDF of the normal distribution, and you know the PDF basically measures the density. Or the likelihood for each value to occur, okay. Even though this does not express the probability, but it immediately tells you that if the curve is higher than for the value to occur around that region would be higher, okay. So let's assume、um, if I cut a region like this, then I know. The area is the probability for the value to occur within this particular interval. Okay, if I talk about another region that is far from the center, then the probability will just decrease a lot. So that's something the normal distribution wants to describe. It wants to describe those data that. Has this kind of strong central tendency, okay? It turns out that the normal distribution has a rigorous mathematical definition, and it is the most important distribution in statistics. Starting from now, in almost every week, you will hear the term normal distribution, and it will be used again and again and again, for some reason that it will become clear, okay? The name "normal"、um, has many meanings. At least there is one meaning here. If a random variable follows the normal distribution, then most so-called normal data will be close to the center. Oh, so.
So normal distribution says that most normal data will be close to the center. Um, now you know, because the left tail and the right tail are basically identical, so this is a symmetric distribution, okay? And for normal distribution, it's perfectly symmetric. If we cut it to half, to the left-hand side and the right-hand side, these two sides are just, one is the mirror of the other. And then, it's called bell-shaped. Oh, it's, this is just an adjective uh, describing how this curve look like. Okay, it's not like M shape. It's not like a triangle, but it's like a bell. Okay, so it's just um describing this shape. So, a uh, normal distribution must have some definition, and the definition is here. Uh, I will just go over it once, and then we can forget it forever. A random variable x follows a normal distribution with expected value mu and the standard deviation sigma. If, so you know this is a definition, if the PDF can be written like this, okay, oh, very scary, but uh, anyway, the only thing you need to know is to know that there is a definition. Okay, you cannot say, uh, the only way for you to say something is a normal distribution is that uh, that distribution must have a PDF like this. Okay, so you cannot say this distribution is normal because the PDF definitely does not like this. You cannot say the, okay. If something like this, you cannot say it is normal. You may say it is look similar to normal, but it is just not normal. Because we have a definite way to check whether one distribution is normal or not. Okay? So that's something to keep in mind. There is a, there is a definition. One thing that you need to keep in mind is the notation. We will write something like this to say x is a random variable that follows a normal distribution with mean mu and the standard deviation sigma. Whenever we have a normal distribution, we need to indicate what's the mean and what's the standard deviation. Because as you can see, the PDF is determined by sigma and the mu. Okay? So, given sigma and mu, we can determine a normal distribution. And the different combinations of mu and the sigma will create different normal distributions. Before we look at that, there are some important properties of the normal distribution for you to keep in mind. These are just uh, simple, simple intuitions and as long as you have that bell shape, that symmetric bell shape in mind, you will understand this. First, its peak, okay? Its peak locates exactly at its mean, on the center or the expected value, okay? Because it's symmetric and it has strong central tendency. And then its mean equals its median. Mean is the expected value. And the median is where half of the data is below it and half the data is above it. Because this particular shape is symmetric. So obviously, if we cut it to two, two parts, then for those below the center, we have one half. And for those above the center, we have another one half. Okay? Then we say, this is the median, and it's the same as the mean, the expected value. Finally, the larger the standard deviation, the flatter the curve. Um, we actually don't need any example to illustrate this. We know standard deviation or variance measure how the data spread, right? And 
if we have a large standard deviation, that means these data basically are generally far from the center. So if the standard deviation becomes larger, the shape must become flatter. So let's see some examples here. Uh, here I have three normal distribution curves. As I mentioned, there are many, many different normal distributions. Okay? As long as you have different pairs of mu and sigma, you have a different normal distribution. Here, the red one is a normal distribution with mean 12 and the standard deviation 1. Okay, so 12, da, 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 12 is here. Okay, you can see its peak locates at its mean. Okay, its peak um, locates at its mean. And then we have another two curves. Their mean is at 10. It's at 10. 10 is here. So this also tells you that if we increase the expected value of mu, we will shift the curve to the right. Okay. Now if we add something to the mean, then the curve, the normal curve will shift to its right. Regarding standard deviation, we have three different standard deviation here, 1, 1 1.5, and 2. And exactly we can see that when the standard deviation is small, for example 1, the curve is, uh, the peak is higher, and the, the, the curve is basically steeper uh, around the center. But when the standard deviation becomes larger and larger, the curve will become flatter and flatter, just like from here to here to here. Okay, so that's normal distribution. You know there is a definition. There is a function so that if the PDF is that function, we say this curve is normal. Okay. And then it is one of the continuous distribution, continuous probability distribution. It has a mean, it has a vari uh, it has a standard deviation. Mean determines where the center is, where the peak is. And the standard deviation determines whether this um, how how flat the, the curve is. Okay, so these are something to keep in mind. In the next video, uh, which is the last video, I will el elaborate on normal distribution. Thank you.